Yo, what's up? Hi, everybody. It's Ace. And Mecca. In reverse. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, today, <laughs> we are doing um, half drawcast, half animation tutorial. Um, the tutorial isn't really going any, over anything too hyper-specific, but I do want to talk about some tips, tricks I used for this relatively complex uh, two-person uh, conflict here. So, basically, the, the context of it is that arrow girl on the, the rock pointing down flips herself up, um, hooks her legs around a rock to suspend herself, and beats this monster boy with a kanifi, but that doesn't quite I, work. I think you mean stalactite I there. I fight you! <laughs> um... It yeah. looks a mess, but trust the process, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, and, and the reason it looks a mess is just because there there are so many layers, and, and that's one of the first things right there is because, it, like, when you do any illustration, there's going to be a lot of iterations, you know, shading, sketch, line art, shadow references. You use layers. That is so much more important for animation because for this, as you might, may see, I'm going to be doing parts of the body in layers. As you can see here, I'm getting just her main torso to map out the general motion. Uh, so I only use one layer for like that first sketch. Um, and that's mainly just blocking. Like, okay, this half the screen is going to be this character. This half the screen is going to be that character. Um, but past that, I mean, and you can kind of choose like, okay, there's no point where one leg will move where the other leg won't. So I made the legs and hips into one uh, drawing layer so that I can just easily manipulate them without having to keep track of a little puzzle. But some people would argue that I should have probably made both legs their own thing so I could have one leg twitch a little bit and have the other not. So was uh, drawing the torso first to just map out the action, was that something that you learned in college or was that something you just picked up as a shorthand? So I chose it mainly because it's going to be the thing that, like, the arms have to be connected to the torso. The head's connected to the torso. So if I have that strained out, because I'm not just drawing the pieces at, like, I'm not just drawing the leg off to the right of the screen and then moving it onto where it needs to be. I'm going to be using my uh, my pegs or my motion tweening to add some extra bounce and life to this. But it's much easier to do that if everything has a rough starting point so if everything's roughly where it needs to be the drawings are already moving in that direction uh does, does that kind of answer the question or make sense no that makes sense okay cool um but yeah like, like right there i put the wings pretty much where they would be and just so that way i only had to use the motion tool to add a little shake i didn't have to puzzle it halfway through like you can see here when i take out the torso it still looks halfway cohesive and as you can see i also only drew now eventually the parts start to look a little weird that's where you have to kind of trust it gotcha but uh as you can see i only drew her to a certain level of completion like half of her shirt isn't there because you know if i it's easier for a few reasons one if i'm doing a lot of hardcore drawing on one character but there's it's hard the more tools and things going have you ever worked in Photoshop and had like 20, like 100 layers on and it starts to crash? Yeah. Same thing will happen with animation. So if I have everything to the same point, I'm not trying to do that really foundational, harder drawing when the computer's all laggy. And on top of that, it keeps everything looking the most appropriate. I don't want to finish mm -hmm. one thing, but then say, oh, that doesn't work with this as well. I have to kind of go back and fix things. So... That's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm tr my goal right now is just to get each character to, as you can see, a, f a level where I can flat them. So now it's still a little messy because of all those tentacles going around. But if I played it back, you would see it reads a little better now because not the characters aren't just overlapping with their lines anymore. Gotcha. Because I'm always a firm believer of you shouldn't be having to save your animation in any one section. You know, you want the motion overall to look good. But again, with those messy sketches, it's a little hard to keep that rule. So right about here, you should be saying, okay, yes, we're on the right track. This is where, again, you'd be like, okay, if there's a problem, let's find the problem and fix it. Um, Did you have like a specific problem where you had to pretty much start over? 
I never had to start over. There were parts where I, you could say I may have compromised a little bit. So, like, the leg and how she spins around the stalactite, um, if I was really going nuts, I may have done a few things differently to try to have the stalactite overlap for when she turns around a little more. And I might still try to go back and do that at some point. Um, but so I kind of relied on the speed of the animation so I didn't have to worry about actually drawing her loop around it. Your eye... But that's why, like, the keyframes are her on one side and then her on the other side. I'm not focusing on the middle as much because that would have uh, involved um, some more uh, frustrating detail work. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I wanted to focus on the beginnings and ends looking good more than anything else. Um, gotcha. Again, if keyframes look good, your in-betweens can be a little messy. Uh, so maybe I will go back and add like an extra layer of the stalactite to kind of turn on for when she flips around it. But yeah, and again, as you can see, I'm going through and I do one batch of color for all of them before I move on to the next color or the next chunk. You know, I do all the line art on his body before I start trying to flatten anything. I'm not finishing one frame, finish one frame, finish one frame. Um, but yeah, again, you can see how each part has its own animation that's playing that fits onto the character mm -hmm. and i just used motion tweens to add a little bit more so i wasn't just drawing 12 frames for every second animation i was drawing maybe two or three frames and just motioned it in because it's fast so the mo more important thing here was those broad fast actions not but those actions when you swing your arm your arm kind of stays in the same position it's just translating through space uh, cool. so there's a, a lot of trying to be sm play smarter not harder Make, makes sense yeah. yeah any questions or thoughts I got nothing you like it yeah yay it's just cool just to see all the process going yeah. into it that was, that was a clip studio time lapse that went for five minutes that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so if you like this uh, comment below and we'll do some more behind the scenes tutorial show offs and let you see how we're doing some things uh, check out the hit cam episode we have posted we're working on the next chapter now as well as a map of the world that you guys might be able to use for d, &D games or uh, just learning about the world maybe make up some stories in it's it. gonna be really fun yeah but till then be safe be weird boy boy